You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the sports coma with Big Q and the Guy. And we have intense, entertaining, and educating sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, and tonight on Podcast 200, that's right, 200, 200 on the podcast, eclipsing the 200 mark. We're going to bring to you some real excellent boxing coming up here on this 30-minute boxing extravaganza. We're going to recap some very good fights that occurred tonight on the Sports Coma. Uh, The Terrence Crawford, Jeff Horn bout, and other fights as we get into the rundown. Brought to you by the good folks at theposhlifestyle.com. That's the uh, P O S H Life, Posh Life, Life spelled a Y L Y F E Style.com for all your latest supplements, organic and otherwise supplements, water filters, uh, EMF protection from that nasty cell phone radiation. Also have uh, healing crystals and gems, healing magnetics to help you heal if you have those pesky. Uh, aches and pains, among other hundreds of dozens of products that constantly add in products to the site with the sports coma uh, in lower and lower cap, the sports coma in the coupon section during checkout, you can get 10% off on your final purchase. That's our little gift to you from the sports coma on tonight's sports uh, boxing extravaganza. We have our boxing expert, one of the guys, our boxing expert, Eddie Too Mean Johnson is in the building. How you doing tonight, Eddie? I'm doing great. How you? Can't complain, my brother. Doing actually good after watching a lot of really great and solid boxing, man, that occurred uh, yesterday, man. I'm I'm enthused, man, to talk about some of these great. Well, I ain't gonna say great, but see some of these great fighters in action. Some of the bouts might have not been that awesome, but to see some pretty damn good boxing, man. Three uh, pretty decent fights. All in the same night, man, uh, is quite spectacular. Of course, we're going to be breaking down the Terrence Crawford, Jeff Horn bout. Uh, we're going to then, you know, in the second seven, second, get into the Charmelo, uh, the Jermel Charlo fight he had with Austin Trout, which was actually a pretty decent bout. And then on the tail end, we'll talk about Tyson Fury's return bout and uh, potentialities moving forward with some of these really solid boxes. Eddie. Jumping right on into it with this Terrence Crawford fight, he had matched up with Jeff Horn. Of course, me and you covered this in the previous podcast where we talked about Jeff Horn not really standing a damn chance against uh, Bud Crawford. And um, like it, like uh, like Terrence Crawford's um, grandma always said, you can't beat Bud, and that that stood up for Jeff Horn. He, he... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's pretty much what it did. Uh, he stopped them. They, in, uh, they ruled it uh, TKO in the ninth round, bro. Uh, elaborate, Eddie. What, you, what was your takeaway from this fight uh, with uh, Terrence Crawford and uh, and Jeff Horn? What, what you thought about what happened there? Uh, it was a, a great fight from a great um, master boxer and Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying he a master boxer going up against a uh, 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 sloppy, <laughs> no balance uh, fighter, man. You know what I'm saying? He, he did what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying kept him at the end of the jab, box move, kept turning him, wore him down. You know what I'm saying he was going for that knockout in the 10th round, like. The boy, the guys, and you know, what I'm saying like, like we predicted on the previous show. Yes, you know, what I'm saying, but they stopped it to keep us from looking so great. But we're great anyway <laughs> because we called it went how we called it. 
He sure did. Eddie, you called it, man. You said that they was going to get him out of there uh, in the later rounds before 10 rounds. And, and, and they did do it just right there. They got him out, TKO'd him in the ninth round. He knocked him around, uh, uh, did pretty good. I mean, just you would thought that Jeff Horn might have the advantage in terms of uh, being a, a natural born fighter fighting at that welterweight title. But Bud Crawford came in there and, and showed him, listen, man, I can dominate uh, the class underneath this one, and I'm going to dominate this one as well. And he get in there and he just and he got in there and took uh, uh, Jeff Horn's belt, who a lot of people, including my, uh, yourself, said that he didn't really earn from Pacquiao. So uh, when it's all said and done, you call him a master boxer. And in, in, in some of the polls that I've seen, seeing uh, Terrence Bud Crawford as the best pound for pound, pound boxer in the business. Yeah, as far as skills wise, yeah, because he can do it all. He, like I say, he can box orthodox. Uh, Southpaw, he can brawl. You know what I'm saying? He box you on the outside, inside. You know what I'm saying? You gotta work them angles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, he got more experience than a lot of these dudes that they put in the top. They put in pound for pound list. That he does. Because, like, wait, he... Go ahead. No, don't go ahead, Ada. You can finish it. Yeah, he's like I said, he he got more experience than um. You know what I'm saying, like I said, he can do it all, man. So I, mean, I got him as number one pound for pound right now. Well, he moved up to a tougher uh, class, and no doubt about it, man. It, it, he's going to have a, a, a some call it as a talent rich 147 pound division, and Jeff Horn okay. is, is is probably the 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 weakest of opponents that he's going to face on his way to fighting some really good fighters, man. Yeah. Like I said, they, they, knowing that fact, they gave uh, Jeff, Jeff Horn the, the, uh, the size and strength advantage. But he, Bud Crawford was stronger than him. Like we were saying, he, he going to try that rough stuff, but uh, Bud Crawford is a rough dude, man. Yeah. And that's all he's going to do is piss him off. <laughs> and that's when he's going to really let loose on you. When you get him pissed, and you know what I'm saying, he'll let loose on your ass and get you out of there. Well, he blew. He got Jeff Horn out of there, and he stopped his music like we we uh, astutely said he was. I mean, that was pretty good. Looking at some of the the uh, bunch, the punch stats uh, from the fight, Eddie um, Bud Crawford landed 155 uh, shots out of 367 for a 42 uh, percent hit ratio uh, com- uh, percentage. So, I mean, that's con- this 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 is CompuBox numbers. Horn. Uh, landed 58 shots out of 257 <laughs> for 23 percent versus Master Bud Crawford's 42 42 percent. Yes, no doubt about it. Master boxer, my man. So we the, accuracy is his own point, man. 42 percent. That's not yeah. bad at all, man. What? Yeah, he getting up there with Mayweather, man. <laughs> the percentages, man. Yeah, that's so a bad. that's another question I wanted to ask you too about uh, Bud Crawford. I guess I can save that right before we, we got a break. We got we still got a few more minutes before we get into the break. But I know for a fact that this was just uh, preseason work. I mean, light work for Bud Crawford taking out Jeff Horn. We knew Horn didn't stand a chance. We knew that he just he was holding the title. He's one of those stakeholders, just holding the title. Uh, one of he was he was a true sense of a turn past it because all he did, only thing he did was take the belt and passed it right on to Terrence Crawford. So I guess we can call him past the horn. But when it comes down to it, what's moving forward for him is the fact that when we look spanned out and look at the people that was, that's next possible for Bud Crawford to fight. I mean, and you look into the welterweight division, Fast Eddie, you know, like I know, there's Errol Spence Jr., there's Keith Thurman, not to mention Manny Pacquiao, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter. I mean, they got a, a wealth of really solid boxes in this class. So it's, it's really exciting to see Bud Crawford, man, be mixed up with those guys. So, you know, spanning forward, using your crystal ball, what do you think's next ahead for Bud Crawford? Yeah, I think next will be like when, he, when Bud Crawford was uh, asking for at the end of the fight, at the end of the he's like, look, I want to unify the belt. I want the champion. I want the top guys. So, he, you know what I'm saying? I think he earned it, right? So, they should give him the top guys. Like, Errol Spence, at the, you know what I'm saying? He has a fight this weekend coming up in his hometown of Dallas. 
know what I'm saying? This is mandatory. You know what I'm saying? Whoever wins that, it, it should be the next fight should be a unification bout between Errol Spence Jr. and Bud Crawford. I you think know what I'm saying? They, you yeah. know what I'm saying? people want to see. They want to see the they want to see the champions fight each other so they can have one champion in each division. That's true. Okay, the best fight in the best. Let's see who comes out on top. And that'll that'll that that'll get rid of the uh, who's pound for pound that everybody seems to be confused about who's pound for pound. Let all of let all the top fighters fight each other and see who come out on top. And that'll be pound for pound. That's right. That's the that's the best way to do it. Spoken like a true boxer there, uh too mean, bro. The way I see it, bro, looking at the rest of it, bro, I just mentioned some really solid names. Like you said, Errol Spence Jr. got that upcoming fight. Uh, Thurman and Pacquiao, Garcia, Porter, and all those guys, a solid competition for Bud Fighter. He's a different type of dude, period, if you ask me. Um, his skill set's amazing, and he just dispatched on with no effort at all. Now, Pacquiao's a real intriguing candidate, although, you know, we're looking at namesakes, just to, just for the name recognition, but let like let let's move a little forward and talk about the next leg of things. Like we were speaking about uh, Mayweather and uh, and uh, the, uh, a guy like uh, Bud Crawford, man. Um, could he ever? Could he eclipse? Now we got maybe two minutes before we go for our first break. Could Bud Crawford in your take, man? And you follow a lot of boxing. Could Bud Crawford possibly overtake Mayweather? I mean, he finished what fifty and oh, you know. Could 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 Bud Crawford eclipse that mark in your opinion? I mean, you know I'm saying from the way he's going now, if he keeps up the good work and keep improving, he's a great fighter already, and he's still improving. If he keep that going, you know what I'm saying as, as time go by, when new fighters come along, they 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 seem to outdo the other previous fighters. You know what I'm saying new era of fighters. Come stronger and better. So I think he, he has a chance. Uh, Mayweather set the ball kind of high, man. So the people they're gonna dig deep and they're gonna try to. You know what I'm saying? It, it's gonna make a lot more greater fighters by what he accomplished. So yeah, I think he does have a chance of doing uh, doing Mayweather. That's saying a lot, man, because Mayweather, like you said, he's elevated the ball so high that you got to get close to perfection. But if anybody, if anybody that I can name that can that can live up to that level of greatness. It is one Terrence Bud Crawford. Hands down. The grandma said can be Bud. <laughs> well listen, we about to go into our first break, people. Uh that'll do our talk on the Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn uh about uh, so we get ready to eclipse when we move forward. We come back on the other side of the break. We're going to get into the, the Jamel Charlo versus Austin Trout fight. Uh, we'll break that down as well as talk about Tyson Fury and other boxing news on the other side of the break. You listen to the Sports Coma, episode 200, Boxing Recap Edition on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans Eye View. 
Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition Cover Athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was an NBA 2K Legend Cover Athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup. Every incredible shot. Every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the Sports Hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. We're talking boxing, man. Our boxing expert is in the building, Eddie Too Mean Johnson, and he's with me tonight. We recap it. Some serious night of boxing that happened Saturday night. We just recapped Terrence Bud Crawford's big win over Jeff Horn. Now we're about to go into a really solid fighter whom a, a lot of people talking a lot about fast Eddie, and that's Jamel Charlo, the Charlo boys. A, a serious business in the boxing game, man. And he had a fight against Austin Trout. Uh, he actually beat Austin Trout, they said, by majority decision, two to one. Although me and you watched the fight, you agree, I agree with you as well, that it looked like it should have been a unanimous decision being that Charlo was pressing Trout all night. He knocked him down a couple of times. Uh, he was just imposing, not to say that Trout wasn't doing a pretty decent job because if you remember when Trout fought, the uh, his brother he did a pretty decent job of kind of keeping uh boxing him there but this time around i think he learned a lesson his brother told him i would have done it this way and that's what i see he's boxing like how the brother should have boxed him but you were saying um your particular take on it was we talked off break and you were saying how uh, he was doing a little bit too pressing nevertheless um he did get the win over trout uh two to one uh what's your take on the austin trout and uh jermall charlo fight what you thought about that uh, it was a great fight like i say um uh charlo hey, i think he was looking for the ko too much instead of just working off the jab but you know what i'm saying he, he did he was doing well you know what i'm saying he was getting that right hand on and hitting that body pretty good to wear him down a little bit and austin trout was doing a good job as well he was you know what I'm saying, um, boxing him instead of trying to slug with him because you, you already know you can't slug with that lion, man. <laughs> Not like that. You can't go head up with that lion like that. So he boxed. He was getting some good counter shots and stuff in there. But like I said, uh, young lion was just too much for him. He couldn't tame the lion. <laughs> It did, he okay. did he did a pretty good job. You're right, Eddie. Uh, Trout's not a bum, man. He's an experienced fighter, man. And um, and he wasn't, you know, and, and, and I got to give uh, Jamal Charlo uh, some credit because he did press a little bit. You're right. You're absolutely right. And if he would have just remained and boxed like he usually would, the knockout would have came to him. And I agree, right. with, I agree with that big time. Uh, he pressed a little bit because I think, you know, he's feeling like my his time is now. And it's time for him to make his um, make his debut, and that in in uh, I guess you would call it the um, um, I guess you would call it uh, the middleweight division, uh, up to 160 pounds. Uh, I think that's uh, what. No, no, Eddie. What, what? His brother is 160. Yeah, yeah. He, he's 154, right? He's 100. Jermel's, uh, uh You got Jermel Charlo. Is third, and of course, uh, his brother is uh, J- Jamal is uh, is the is the the middleweight. So, yeah, um, I don't I, I don't know Eddie. Uh, 
the way I see it is, bro, I just think that Trout was a was a good, impressive show. Uh, and he just he, he did a pretty good job of outboxing them, man, uh, f- for the most part. Which, you know, fitness, fitness finish talking about what you think about these Charlo boys in particular, uh, Jermel, man, and how he was able just to do what he was what he was able to do in the fight to uh, to an experienced guy like Jeff Trout. I mean, Austin Trout. Sorry. Yeah, they, man, they, they got awesome jabs, man. You know what I'm saying a lot of people don't know that the jab is like the most important punch in boxing. You know what I'm saying? It, it could be a good defense and a good offense. You know what I'm saying? And they work off the jab well. You know what I'm saying? And they, they got power in both hands. And them boys are hungry, man. You know what I'm saying? And the, when you want if you got a good jab, if you don't work on anything in boxing, if you're gonna work on anything the most, it, it should be the jab. Because like I say, the jab can get you out of trouble. And it can set up trouble on your part for for, for the benefit you with the other guy. So the, the boys got some great jabs, man. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, they, they got that power in both hands, and, and they hungry and determined, man. You got Jermel. Uh-huh. Jermel Charlo is now 31 and 0, Eddie. You know, 31 and 0. And uh, Jamal Charlo is 27 and 0. So that's, you know... You you absolutely right, man. Those guys, um, you gotta watch out for those guys, man, because it, it, it's just they absolutely they they're gonna be holy terrors, man. You spoke about uh, Jamel op, you know him looking at taking on Jared Hurd, who's some people consider the top uh, junior middleweight in the in in his class, you know, and man, it, that'll be a really interesting fight to be honest to be honest with you uh in that bout because you got jared up there then you got jamel charlo then you have Ishralanda, alara jamie mungaya would be an interesting fight as well then you know then there's even julian williams there as well so i mean what's your take moving forward uh after he dispatched uh trout in this fight by by a what they call it a majority decision uh, what's your what's your span, spanning out looking ahead? What do you think is on the horizon now for Jamel Charlo in particular, thirty one and old? What's 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 the next fight that you want to see uh, appear up there? I, I want to see him unify the belt with Hurt because that's what that's that's the big hype of boxing right now. The best fighting the best. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what I'm saying? so it could be a, no question about who's the best in the division. You know what I'm saying? If them fighters need to fight each other, and that'd be the best fight. It'd be good for boxing. So I think uh, Gerald Hurd should be uh, Charlo's next fight. They unify the belt. So that way it'd be no question. All these people talking about who's the best in the division, and they calling out each other, but none of the fights are happening. Very few are happening. Most of them are not happening. You know what I'm saying? I think that coin needs to flip. And let the, you know what I'm saying? Let them unification bouts take place. Who's the best? So it'd be all that, all the doubt could be erased, man. That's my take on that. Absolutely, um, I, I agree with you, man. A, a lot of that running, man. This is boxing, not running. You know, you, you, you sooner or later, if you get a belt, you got to learn that you can't sit there and 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 hold those belts and not and fight a bunch of cab drivers. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to take some of the top competition. And when you get to the to the welterweight classes and right around the middleweights and all that, Eddie, it's very good boxing going on. It's more more balanced fighters, really good solid fighters than there is at the heavyweights. The heavier you go up into the cruisers or the heavies, uh, the C, you know, it, it thins out greatly. Like if you look at the heavyweight division, which we about to get into in just a moment, we talk about Tyson or Fury. Uh, it thins out a great deal. Like we talk about Bud Crawford and the Errol Spence and the rest of those guys and uh, who, who who could be uh, fighting against each other. I'm just loving the fact that the middleweights and the welters and all those guys who've been strong over the years, that it that these guys, like you said, that there's no running no more. Bud Crawford has put pressure on people. He's jumped into a very talented field of boxes. You got the Charlos cutting loose. Uh, it's going to be real interesting going forward, and I'm really looking – uh, really enthused, man, about seeing a lot of these really good young fighters try to establish their legacy. I know another 
another thing too, man. A lot of these guys are being managed by businessmen. They're not really boxing guys. They, you know, they businessmen. They try to do what's best for their company. You know what I'm saying? So that they're going, of course, they're going to avoid fights where the fighter is most likely going to lose, or a strong possibility that their fighter will lose, and that'll be that'll mess up the company, the company brand. So a lot of these guys are not like how it used to be, like fighting the top guys. Like, look, you're going to stretch this out so we can make the most money. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the case with a lot of these, uh, all these fight hypes. Who's the best? I think you're right, yeah, that's man. It, I think you're right on that, Eddie. I think you're absolutely right, man. Uh, that's what you're saying about Deontay Wilder and Joshua, Anthony Joshua's fight, is get the these high-priced uh, talking machine people uh, like Eddie Hearn, who's obviously beefed out with Eddie DeBella uh, and all this foolishness, get their butts out the way and let the fighters fight. You guys can curse each other out at the scenes. And uh, But talking about some of these heavyweight fighters moving up in class and talking about those guys, Tyson Fury, man, a real popular fighter, uh, won a championship, uh, won it, won the belts of Klitschko uh, back in, I think it was 2015 when he beat Vladimir Klitschko and surprised the boxing world. Then, of course, he got hit on that doping scandal, got caught, and he was kicked out of boxing for a while. He had his first fight since coming back. Uh, a, a, two years later, he finally was able to take on a fighter by the name of Sefer Safari uh, Saturday night. And he was able to stop the guy in the fourth round uh, to win his first bout in a while. He moved on to be 26 and old. Now, Eddie, of course, a lot of people don't really too much talk about Tyson Fury. Uh, but, you know, in the game and some people, Deontay Wilder even classified him as a clown and a buffoon, you know, with his antics. Like when he was in the ring with Deontay one time, Deontay was like, look at this guy. He's jumping around, throwing his shirt off, walking back and forth. He is quite uh, a character, but there's no denying that Tyson Fury can could fight. The guy has, you know, for a big guy, I think that's what really trick a lot of people out, how fluid he is. You know, uh, he got pretty decent footwork. He can work his jab. He got he got power, you know, with that right. He can lay you down. He can move pretty good for a guy his size. And uh, he right. was able to lay this guy out. What you think about Tyson Fury uh, uh, back in the heavyweight division again? Yeah, he, he, his talent is like, his style is like a frustrating style, an awkward style. And you don't make you don't make a good fighter look bad, man. Because of his movement and his long reach. <clears throat> That's why I, I think a lot of guys don't want to really look bad like that with him. He, you know what I'm saying? You run into those boxes where everything they do is seem like it's just backwards. Even though they might be um, a orthodox or not a southpaw, but everything they do is just like it throws your time in and stuff off. I think that's the case with um with uh, Tyson Fury, you know, what I'm saying he's a very op- awkward guy, man, and he, he, he's hard to look good against. You know, what I'm saying like how, how, how he did the Crisco. You know, what I'm saying he makes right. guys, good guys, look bad because of their rhythm. His rhythm like throws people off, man. And a lot of people like to avoid fighting them type of dudes because they make them look bad. Yeah, so right, it, I think it, I, you know. Well, he fa- he facing against uh, his next movements. We don't know. He took a it was a kind of I guess you could say a warm up fight against a a, a fighter a, a lesser heavyweight in the division, lesser name guy. Uh, but uh, obviously, he has sights set on the uh, uh, Joshua, who, as it stands right now, is still negotiating with Deontay Wilder to be able to get the fight done uh, either in the United States or in Europe. But like we said before, uh, Eddie, like Eddie, using his terminologies, he says uh, there's A side and B side in this. And Andy Joshua with four belts, obviously, is the A side who determines uh, where we're going to fight, when we're going to fight. And if, Ant- if Deontay Wilder don't like it, he can beat, go and get in the ring and beat his ass. And then you can fight him wherever you want, fight him with the rematch when it comes down to the money. They're not offering him no bad money. I mean, they're offering him more money than he, he ever made fighting professionally yeah. and to be quite honest with you uh, the, the, uh Andy Joshua was the draw he's a lot younger you know and not to say that Deontay is an old man but in the end he's had 40 fights versus half of what Joshua did and Joshua then reached a point where he's a hundred million dollar fighter so what's your particular take on the Deontay while the Joshua uh situation Eddie upgraded what you thought about that I think 
one of them want to, they all want the fight to happen. <laughs> because obviously it's going to draw more money than any one of them made in their previous fights. So why not? <laughs> why not fight? You know what I'm saying? That's what they're in the business for, them business people that's backing them. You know what I'm saying? That's the better business deal to make. Them two fighting each other. So I don't know what the hold up is, man. Either somebody don't want to fight. Well, like I said, we, we shall see. Well, we, we, we're going to see definitely, man, because uh, the time is thinning out what well, it's supposed to be setting up for a September fight, uh, possibly August, September, maybe uh, a November fight between those guys. If it don't get done, uh, Alexander Plavakian is the backup plan for Eddie Hearns. Now, we're about to get out of here. We appreciate y'all for joining us on the Sports Coma Boxing Edition, recapping the really good night of fights we also want to mention the fact that we got a couple of upcoming fights uh, Mickey, Mikey Garcia will be taking on uh, Esther Jr. to unify the, the belts on June, July the 28th and Pacquiao and Matheson undercard is finalized so Manny Pacquiao is back on the prowl uh, ladies and gentlemen and that's a little bit of a little boxing information as well i also like to thank y'all for joining us on the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy uh, our boxing expert like to thank him uh, Eddie Two Mean Johnson for joining us tonight as well and like always if you guys enjoy the show please go to our Patreon page www.patreon.com slash the P-R-O Media Network and show your support draw out a donation or share our show on your social media feeds join Facebook our Facebook Twitter and Instagram pages as well even our YouTube for more content and from me and Eddie thanks for joining us tonight peace Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artists. Thank you.